welcome to the podcast. Today's guest is Mike Scott. Mike, welcome aboard, mate. Uh, welcome and good day to you. Thank you. Right, so if we start with a bit of a background um, from you, let the guys know who you are and then we can go from there, mate. Yeah, um, I'm Mike Scott. Um, well, I started, it was about 1985 when I had my first carp and that was from the River Lee. Um, you know, I was, I'm only about catching carp that are not hounded, like mm-hmm. catching carp that, are I can never say never, but more than likely have never been held mm-hmm. and never been caught. And that was, that's the whole life of me carp fishing, catching these carp that are unknown. They haven't got names. They're just, they're, 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 they're the special ones. And uh, that's virtually what I've done for since I was 15 years old. I'm 50 now. Yeah. And, um, you know, from the docks in London before they had the estates that they have now, they used to have the old warehouses, you know, the old docks of what they used to be. They were just derelict um, to the rivers, no fishing lakes, the Royal Parks, Virtually everywhere around London, nearly everywhere around London and surrounding, I went over and poached and caught these nice. wonderful carp that have never, well, more than likely never been caught before. Yeah. How did it all start for you then, Mike? It all started for me. I was living um, just by the River Lee. Um, I used to go to a school called Drayton. I used to live by Crowland Road and I lived on the river. And I used to look over from my balcony um, at the Warwick. Uh, we used to go over to Warwick and we used to have um, lorry inner tubes. So that was our fun, going over there. And then I went over there and I can still remember this to this day. I see a guy catch a carp. And I was so excited, my nose started bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> God's on his truth. Yeah. And... I thought, I want some of that because I used to go fishing with my uncle and that and, you know, just with the old quills and he gave me an abu rod and I still remember the reel. It was a Black Prince Intrepid. I don't know if you remember them reels. Um, Very old and just catching, you know, like perch and stuff from on a quill float and it just progressed from there. Um, And then I saw that guy catch that carp. And I was like, hmm, I want to try for this. And then I caught my first carp. And then the passion just grew and grew and grew. Um, I didn't really get in too much about the carp people, the names. You know, I've heard of Rod Hutchinson then and um, Kevin Nash and people. But I've never been, been one for going with who this is, who that is. I was always away from it all. So I never knew the ins and outs of carp fishing. I always fished for them, like done it myself sort of thing, if you can understand what I'm trying yeah. to say. Um, and it just grew and grew from now. And I used to go over to Walthamstow. I've known Alden. He's been Jeff. He's been going over there for God donkey's years. And all the old bailiffs, when you could walk under the bridge before it was stopped. And it was like an aquarium under that bridge. As you come through the gatehouse, it was like an aquarium there. And seeing the size of them carp that were in there and over Walthamstow, that's where the poaching first started. (laughs) In that, under that little bridge and then onto um the reservoirs itself i'm a lot older now and only a few used to know about this but i used to poach the lockwood the king george that's where i first started carp fishing Mm -hmm. as a kid and there weren't cameras about them days or anything and we did used to catch quite a few fish on limited tackle as well um i've I've caught quite a lot of those reservoir carp jumping over of a (laughs) night many years ago, 30 years ago. Um, And then 
it was the river that got me back to it because I, you know, I've lived in Tottenham most of my life, mm-hmm. and um, just I stumbled across a few big carp. After catching a little one out of there, my first one, I stumbled across some car. I was like, cool, bloody hell. And that's where a 20-year-long session started. <laughs> um, I've had some tremendous carp out of there. And I literally kept it under wraps. No one knew what I was doing. A few of the Walthamstow boys knew what I was doing. Yeah. But no one ever used to come come down to that river. Um, the carp in there, I don't know, they're just something else. You know, you catch them, their mouths are uh, mint. Mm. Everything about them is mint. For a crusty mm. old river that gets all that sewage and everything going into that river, mm. you'd think, you wouldn't think these carp are so pristine in there. Um, yeah, I was on there. It, I was on there solid for about 20 years because I'd seen uh, over time you get to know a place and by off chances, you're like, oh, hang on, why are they all here? And then you realise the next year they're there. And, you know, you build a picture of how the river is because you'll be fishing somewhere and you're, well, why ain't it happening? Why ain't it happening? And then you stumble across little things knowing where they are and what they're doing. I hooked a common down there in 1997 and I lost it and I stopped fishing for 18 months. <laughs> Just because, because of that. Yeah, literally. I've, I've been after a few in there and I know what's in that river and now a good friend of mine Billy Stone has put some time in down there because I've always said to him, Bill, there's some good ones down here, mate. And he got down there and he's had a few of the nice ones out. Uh, And he's lost one of the ones that I've had. It's a linear. Hmm. Um, Not going to go into the weight of it now. And, you know, but he lost it twice. Um, We've... Harry, Harry lost it and what he knows about the place, he understands why I was there so long because of what is in there. And I know a couple of them are still in there. It's well known now. It, it wasn't known when I was doing it. I was on, I was on there for years. I'd never see another carp angler, just like all the other places, like the docks. You know, you got like um, Victoria Dock, Surrey Keys, all the docks around those areas that are quite well known now. I never see anyone when I was there. And most of the time I'd be with my mate Dave, the mad African. We went everywhere together. Um, and being in these places where no one ever was, no one was no one was really doing this, like, you know, fishing inner city places that are, mm. I probably don't know of anyone. There might have been people there that were fishing, but I never see anyone carp fishing for, you know, they just basically wasn't carp fishing down there. Um, and then sort of moved on to the Royal Parks. The first one that I, I hit, that was St. James's. Mm. That was about, oh God, 25 years ago. Because I noticed I was up there once and I noticed there was a few of them down the old pelican. There was used to be like a pelican um, nest right down the bottom end mm-hmm. where the palace is. And I noticed a few down there and I thought, oh, come on, let's try and catch them. So went over there, just, it was just sweet corn in. And another thing about my fishing as well, I was always natural. I wasn't into these high protein boilies, you know, anything like that. It was, you know, it was always worms, sweet corn, maggots, you know, just things like that that you could get out of your cupboards and things, chickpeas. Yeah. Uh, went down to um, St. James's Park. I don't think anyone has poached St. James's Park because I've never heard of it. Right. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone poaching St. James's Park. 
And there was a funny night when we got caught. Uh, we just had like a moody little camera. That was the cameras now. If you took a picture of them, they'd be, you know, they're not the quality as they are now. Yeah. And um, this is the funny thing about it. Where the flash was going off, we've had two guards come up to us in the woods. <laughs> And they're like, what are you doing here? I was like, we're taking pictures of bats. <laughs> 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 and we we got away with it. <laughs> well, we literally got away with it because <clears throat> we'd heard people coming, so we'd like we'd thrown the stuff. It was, you know, it was, they're not gonna find it. Yeah. And then moved on to um, Hyde Park. Caught loads of fish out of Hyde Park. Now, this is all yeah. going back 25 years, you know, yeah. probably later. We was only kids scanning yeah. around, just but loved catching these, you know, doing all these, catching these fish. Um, <clears throat> then it was sort of, you know, put, I got onto the, I got onto the King George and started like I've spent quite a, a bit of time on there. We'd been plotting about here, there and everywhere, as you do. thought, let's just take a bit of time on here. We used to go over there at times and we'd notice people that would be over there, but they never they never see us because we'd go over by Stonebridge Locks and we cut an hole under the metal fence. So we'd get under there, right up the top end. <laughs> some, of, some of them plated mirrors that we used to get out of that King George were literally unbelievable. And I didn't really speak about, you know, them things. And then it was a few years later, it must have been about four or five years ago, that I heard that the bailiffs were fishing over there from the stow and hearing that a few of these nice plated mirrors were coming out and stuff. And I was with my mate Dave. Yeah. And I was like, do you think they're still the ones that we used to get out of there? Like, <clears throat> just... They'd more than likely, you know, never been caught. Just wonderful carp. Mm. You know, that's just what I was about all the time. Well, over 30 years, easy. Well, no, it's more than 35 years. 15 mm. I started. And, well, yeah, I'm 50 now. Yeah. yeah. And uh, plotting around there, even going up to where there was a place called the Mile Long Lake. Now, the linears that we used to get out of there were unbelievable as well. The marinas at Royston, all round Broxbourne, even doing some of them waters as well overnight. Yeah. That's just what I was about, just going out, doing my thing, away from the crowds, away from the people and everyone else. And on certain occasions, I'd go out with a couple of mates. Um, then I started getting back on the river. And I was with like my ex-wife and she goes, you really catch a lot of fish. Like, can't you go into competitions? And I was never about things like that or anything. And yeah. I went in for the Nash Carp Cup with just strictly urban carp. And I come second. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was behind Spencer Humble. He had, the, I think he called the mother if I'm mm. correct. And I was like, oh, I don't really, this really ain't me sort of thing, like yeah. letting everyone know what is going on. Um, so I still stuck on the river and still trying, seeing, because I know what's in there and put a bit of time in there. Because I was on my own down there. I'd never see another angler down there carping for a year, two years, three years. I wouldn't see him. Mm. And I'd still go over Walthamstow and that and talk to a few people I know, saying, well, you give it a bash down there. No, I wouldn't bother with that. Because the estates and all that, them sort of times, a lot of people would come away from them sort of places. You know, you're right in the heart of Tottenham, you're around mm. um, what comes with Tottenham, Hackney, places like that. You know, you're going to get glue sniffers, crack addicts. You're going to get every piece of dirt of life that will be coming mm -hmm. along them tow paths and sometimes you know it, it did get a bit hairy and 
you know, but that was very rare because I'm quite well known along that area. And, you know, the amount of time I was there, I might as well have been a tree. I've been there so long. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I started putting a bit of time in back down the river again, started getting a few out, getting a few nice ones. And then, uh, the old little thing comes into your head. Oh, I feel a bit bored. Um, let's go looking elsewhere. So you go looking elsewhere. You start fishing other places. And then there was a place that I, I wanted to fish because I knew that they were in there. Um, and I've not heard it in the mags or because I started reading a few mags. That's when I started uh, reading Big Carp magazine. That was one of my first magazines that I read. Yeah. Because that all come across where I got a DVD and it was called the Yahoo Crew. Uh, I don't know if you remember that. It's Rob Malin and all around the Yately complex. Um, and it was quite lucky because I ended up moving to Primrose Hill. Um, and that's virtually right on the doorstep of Regent's Park. Um so I thought, let's give this a go. I knew what was in there. Um, it was quite short as it goes because I was over there for, it was only a couple of weeks and then I started getting recaptures and it was time yeah. to pull off. Yeah. You know, was, I caught everything in there virtually and then, and then pulled off the place. And it was round about... It was just coming up to spawn because this is a time when I'd I'd go to places and find out, you know, instead of going somewhere and you're sitting up trees for God knows how long to see yeah. what's in the place, I'd rather go to a place when virtually most of the country's in spawn. So then you're going to get a rough idea of what's in that lake because where yeah. they are. So you're going to see probably most of them there. And uh, there was a little in a in a city place that bearing in mind I'd fished over there must have been about 1989 but I used to only go in there for pike I used to go over there with my mate John now John's called he's called John the Ill he's well known down the River Lee because he's like he lives off the land he's a hunter sort of thing everyone knows him down Hackney mm -hmm. and I was over there just piking so I don't know what came into me. I thought, let me just go and have a look over there. And so I've jumped over. Everywhere's spawning. It's a lovely day. I've jumped over there. And as I've come up the bank, I've walked over. And they're just there. I was like, wow. I thought, right, let's go and get some ink. Let's get a plan together here which wasn't really hard, really, because all I had to do was just fill it in and go back a couple of weeks later and I was getting triple takes continuously. Nice. Uh, I virtually emptied that place out within a month, started getting recaptures. And I, well, I was on a, a forum. I've got another little story about the forum as well. Um, I was on a mate of mine's forum, it's quite, quite well-known forum, uh, carpuk.net, a friend of mine, Robin. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, 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 a friend of mine, Robin, used to own it. Yeah, I know Robin. Yeah, yeah. I, I was on there for ages. Hey, I was on there for quite a while, that forum. Well, you must have known me then, the rabbi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I think I was Dom 23 or something. Oh, <laughs> oh I used to get banned from there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but Rob was a good mate of mine. Uh, yeah. That's another story that I'll get to. I've got quite a bit because I used to fish with Robin for a good few years. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd got over to this lake and was got over there, literally hammered it. And because Ed was on that forum, Eddie Bet, that was his, mm -hmm. if you remember him. And Ed, mm -hmm. Ed come down on the lake with me. He was virtually one of the first people that I took to this inner city lake. Um, and the first night he come down, uh, he only had one fish. Because I went, yeah, just put it on that spot over there. I don't care if I catch because I've had them all. Um, bar one, I never had, which I 
know now. But every other one, and there's others that I've had that I haven't seen pictures of that I've showed them. Have you had this? Did you have that one? They're like, no, I ain't had that. And uh, we had a big hit the second time. I think we had 15 fish out between us and getting triple runs. It was that was that was a good uh, that was good bank holiday that was. Um, uh, then I was at Sam Jeffries. Um, I'd met him in a, in a pub, and he liked the way um, you know what I'd done of of stuff. I said, "Come out with me, like you know, come and do this." As you know, Sam's a good fisherman. He goes to Morocco. He goes, you know, Cassian places over on the continent. He, you know, he catches some good fish. Uh, I took him over there and um, little Alfie Ralph, you know, Alfie Ruckle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 he used to yeah. ring me up when he was about 13 years old to come fishing <laughs> and little places to go. He, you know, he's a good angler, you know, he's mm. getting himself somewhere, he's doing good. It's quite a few people, even Jacob, little Jacob Worth. Yeah. Um, because I've been about helping people out along the way. Uh, mm. there's a lot of anglers that know that I would. I wouldn't call myself a brilliant angler or anything, but how I go about things is just simplicity. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there was that hit with Ed and I, I was finished with the lake uh, after I've had what I had. And um, it was about oh, a couple of months after that, I'd moved and I ended up in Anglesey where I've been for the past five, six years now. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to Robin, and if he ever hears this, he'll laugh. We spent many a times together, me and Rob. Um, he first, when he first come down to the river, because um, when I went onto the forum, he was like, uh, are you Mike from the river? I went, yeah. He went, can I come and have a fish with you? I went, culture camp, like, come and have a fish. Um, I think he was about... 18 months before he got his first 30. You oh. probably know about that. Uh, Being on no, the forum. Okay. No. Yeah, uh, um, well, the first time I ever took Robin was, um, it was a Friday. And the Saturday morning, because I put him up on the point of the River Lee where the two rivers meet. And I was like, mm-hmm. if you're going to get anything, you will get any. Because I'm not a selfish angler. I'm not going to fish on the spot knowing I'm going to catch why someone that's guesting with me isn't going to catch. Mm-hmm. So I'll put him on the spot where he's more likely to catch. And Saturday morning, about six o'clock, he's come walking down. And it looked like he's seen a ghost. I was like, Rob, what's the matter, Mike? He's gone, Mike. He goes, I've just lost something substantial. I went, really? He went, yeah, mate. He goes, my rod was bent double, mate, and it just went. I was like, oh, so you've lost a good one then? He went, yeah. That's when he was hooked, and we fished for three years together. Huh. Pro- nice. Probably longer than that. And... uh we used to have some brilliant times, you know, there's times when he, we was by the bridge. Uh, I don't know, I can talk about these things, but he's woke me up in the morning. He's gone, Mike, what's the matter? He goes, uh, I've just woke up in the night and I've had a big black man with his thing hanging out st- stood right in front of me. <laughs> You, you asked Robin, it's Robin to tell you. I went, really? I, mean, I didn't know what to say, Mark. I wanted to call you, but you was asleep and I didn't know what to do. And he just walked off. And uh, that was like a fun, that's a funny experience. And there was a time when um, it's like my rod went off. And where he's just jumped up because we've both got Delkims, he's jumped up, he's jumped all over his rods, they've gone everywhere and he's run up he's picked my rod up hit into it and i'm like rob that's my rod mate and he's he's covered in mud and that was brilliant we had such such good times i've got utmost respect for robin uh i i spent many many a times with him and it was about 18 months that he didn't have an uh, 30 pounder at the river and then from what I'd gathered about the river, going back to, you know, when you stumble across chance situations and yeah, I was like, Rob, 
Uh, I'm not going to say when it is because these are for myself down there. I was like, Rob, there's a certain moon, mate, and it's a certain moon, certain time of the month. And Robert, you know, Robin will tell you this. I was like, come, we've got to get out. So we've got out, um, sitting there, and you can you can see him there. And it's normally as as it's going down, because I've always gone, I don't talk a lot about fishing to a lot of people that I know. Like I'll go a lot mm. by moon percentages, like 82 is a killer, I think mm. it is, and a moon rise. You know, when the moon's rising, I've mm. always done quite good within that hour of the moon rising. Right. So I was going, Rob, this, this certain moon on this time, we've got to get there. Um, it was there most of the night and then it must have been about five in the morning he's had a take, a slow take but it's just dragged his rod and pod everywhere and he's hit into it and he couldn't do nothing with it it weren't a fast, you know these little scrap of twenties or anything it just went off and it, it done him on something and he was like, no, oh, no this is... I went, look get your rod back out put it in the same place, leave it because you might have scared the shoal off, but they're going to come back. And it must have been about half an hour later, he's sitting there holding a 36-pound mirror. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 36-pound mirror, a uh, floppy towel. And uh, my daughter had that out. That was her first ever carp at 31 pound. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, on two bits of corn, and that was uh, just soaked in the old Vimto, because the old Vimto used to be a lot more syrupy than this right. new stuff. Like, you'd soak the corn in Vimto, and you'd get, like, these little specks. You know, like, you get a little bit of salmon oil or something, it would come off things, and you see yeah. it, like, pinging on the surface. Yeah, yeah. That was brilliant, that stuff, the old stuff. It was, like, a really thicky syrupy sort of thing you got it on your hands and they were really sticky mm. once you were uh, i think but that was yeah that was her first fish first ever fish and she was in between the legs and i had she had hold of the rod and i had hold of it as well and mm. we got it in yeah that was her first ever one i went that was my daughter's first ever fish rob 31 pound and then i showed robin a picture of me holding it as well i went look it's floppy tail he was like, oh, yeah, I went, I've, I've never seen that come out because no one else used to fish there. Yeah, These fish yeah. were totally unknown. <laughs> you know, they really were. Um, it was, that's sort of like how my fishing always was. And I hope that I will get back into it again because last year, going back before, I spent a year um, in preparation, I went out and bought myself new compact rods, 10 foot rods, 10 foot old yeah. rods, um, aqua atom, um, everything. I spent about two and a half grand on a new setup yeah. um, to go after Jim's fish. Do you know Jim's fish? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one, oh, Rob the Allen. I know Rob Allen. Yeah. The t- yeah. Yeah. Um, got myself all ready. I was even making trips from Hollyhead up to Nutsford. Right. That's a good old trick. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, w- I was even watching the fish. You know, I was in the um, in the uh, reserve, you know, the bit at the back yeah. where no one right. could go. I was watching. I thought, right, I'm going to go for this now. It gives me something to go for because the only thing fishing up where I was in Hollyhead, I was in a place called Triada Bay, lovely place, uh, 50 metres from the Irish Sea. Um, <laughs> the only place I used to go was to a river in Germany. Right. Um, I used to travel over there. Uh, you probably know who I used to go to fishing with as well. On. Being on the forum. On. Why is he? Yeah, and um, I was going to say there's probably a few people I know. I did a, um, <laughs> a French social. My first trip to France was actually with some of the guys from Carp UK, like a social. Yeah. Um, Andy Wilkinson, I think it was, from Hull. Yeah. Remember him? Essex 9, he went. Yeah. Mark Russell, Rusty, yeah, uh, yeah quite a few. <laughs> All the yeah, old lot. Funny. Yeah, funny, isn't it? So you know me, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, funny, isn't it? How mad is that? Yeah. He weird. probably heard a few stories from Robin, didn't you? 
That would be cool. I only, so I wasn't. I probably wasn't one of the names on the forum. I would sort of only chip in every now and then. But yeah. yeah, that's mad, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, oh yeah. So I could carry on. Yeah, that's right, Germany. Yeah. Then I was uh, in Germany. I went over there with YZ. Yeah. Uh, the first time I went over there, uh, I blanked. Now fishing over there is it ain't no easy going. You've got like, um, see, I'm not really going to give it away because you know if you give the length of sections and stuff, people can figure out. And but you've got hundreds of thousands of acres of river. Um, Islands that are a quarter mile long, back bays, backwaters. It's it's hard going. Uh, I've blanked drastically on the first go. And then the second trip, I got myself a bit more organized and thought, right, I want to, I'm not, I'm going to do it. I know what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, went over there. Um, it was a big sunken tree. It was about 250 meters out like on the river and that's not even a quarter of the way across <laughs> no way um so i thought i'm gonna put a couple of rigs here he's like oh i might he went over to the left hand side and uh it was quite funny this um because we woke up in the morning this was on the second morning and there must have been a flock of geese it must have been 50 70 strong and um, you'll get like the dominant one of all the geese. And he's, he's jumped up on his feet. He slapped his feet. He's flapped his wings, made a noise. And they've all moved off from this big sunken tree. I looked at Wisey. I've still I've got the video as well of it. We were talking about it. And I looked at Wisey and I went, that's going to go off, mate. They're here. And he looked at me with a big smile, and that rod just melted. <laughs> and then out on a big boat battle in that river, and then if it's the picture that I sent you of that mirror, yeah. that was like, oh, I've done it. You know, I've been <laughs> asking YZ to get over there for about 15 years, 10, 15 years. And yeah. I was finally there, and I was like, look, I'm here, man. I've got it. I've got one. Then one of his German German friends, he'd uh, sent a message. And I don't know, he must have, he hadn't caught a fish for a year. And he'd been fishing it hard. And he showed me the message. He went, you English, <laughs> you stay away from our rivers. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was brilliant. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, and then, because um, I haven't, you know, been in London, but I am going to, I've got a couple of little things. I'm going to take a few weeks off, you know, with, mm -hmm. with me work because I don't tell everyone everything. No, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a jealous or I'm not a selfish angler. Like when I'm finished with places, then I'll tell people to go, you know, and do it. But the mistake that I've done, I've told certain people and they've ruined them. Yeah. It's like, come on but there's a couple of places that there's a few nice special ones that and they're still there right that i'm gonna be going down for um to give it a crack um but that jim's fish is hard to <laughs> that that ruined me that did for a bit literally all that time and effort putting in yeah. to go for that fish and then to get yeah. a call from someone from Insta and say, Mike, Jim's is dead. It was found dead this morning. I was like, no. Yeah. It's like, wow. Because that's, in my mind, that's, he, he's a special carp. Now, I know I could have poached him out. I could have, I've got years of poaching, you know. I could have been there. No one would have even known I would, I would be there. Because yeah. you learn by even walking across grass in the dew, the footprints and things. And, you know, you just learn ways of how to yeah. go over to places without being seen, heard, anything. I probably could have poached it and caught it. Yeah. But I wanted to catch him 
the proper way. Mm -hmm. You know, without poaching, I wanted to catch it the proper way, just to just to have the honour to hold that fish once. Yeah. You know, but fish. yeah, it didn't. Fifty-seven pound, I think it was when uh, Rob had it. Hmm. Yeah, because I was I asked Rob, and he he was very helpful in um, a few little bits and bobs. Um, and I thought, right, if I'll just put my own fish into this, but I've got to go and watch them first. I've got to go and see it. Yeah. It's big old water. And, uh, yeah, that was the end of that. Right, I, yeah, I, that must have been going for yeah, you. It, yeah, it really was. Um, yeah. But um, what else have I done along the way? I've, I haven't caught that many. I went to, oh, here's another one that you're going to know. Do you remember Welby? Um, Mark Klashnikov on the forum. Don't think so. Uh, think so yeah, he, he took me on a guest. I think if, right. uh, he took me on a 12-hour guest to um, Drayton Fen. Oh, yeah. It's been yeah. about 14 years ago now. Hmm. I managed to winkle one out there. <laughs> it was oh, brilliant. <laughs> I called him round. I went, Mark, I've got, I've got a massive tension in my neck, mate. I went, this is huge. And he's come all the way around. We was in a place called No Carp Corner. Huh. Right down the bottom end, you've got a little river running at the back here. And he's come plotting round. I went, it's in the net there, man. Have a look, look at that. That's probably a record. And he's pulled it out. And there's a nice big common in there. He's like, <laughs> fucking, it's full there. He went, That's what you can throw a drop, mate. Damn, he sawed. <laughs> I was like, oh, but I was well made up. I went with, um, yeah. there was me and Cipri Geek. Ben, if you remember Ben. Now, Ben, yeah, yeah, Ben used to go out and catch all these old classic warriors. He was little estate lakes and things. That's that's mm. what he was about. And uh, then sort of like just after that as well, I just, I went back because I was still back in London there. So I keep going mm. back on myself and, you know, all these yeah. things keep coming back. And I thought I'd jump back on the river again uh, from there. I always went back to the river because there's a couple in there that how the internet is now and how mm. I would know, people would know if these fish come out. Right. Now, there's a, there's a section of the river going up past Pickett's Lock, sort of around that way, that there's a couple of big ones up there. So that's the little plan that I've got got going along that part of the river. Um, my mate Bill, he knows where they are. And I want him I've I wanted him to catch them. It's like, oh mate, you why haven't you had them yet? But I'm gonna give a little bit of time back down now. And uh I think it'll be alright because I've got people that live there and they they'll bait it up for me. You know, I'll throw them a few quid, just say, right, yeah. you know, where to go exactly. They've lived in the area all their lives, they know, and they've been down there with me. I'll, yeah. I'll get a little baiting up thing going down there and see if I can winkle them out. Because yeah. there's certain times oh, nice. of the year where I know where they go. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, what do you do for work, Mike? Me, security. Right, okay. Yeah, security. And now I'm keeping mm -hmm. people out of the you know, the super stores, mm -hmm. um, keeping people spaced apart at this time and you know what's coming with this time and how people are, you know. Um, it is quite hectic, but I'm used to dealing with people and how to deal with people, you know, if yeah. uh, you know how to resolve and... Mm -hmm try to relax the situation of things but yeah security i, I look oh, after nice. places yeah yeah okay. um i bet you must have seen so much change in your time angling as well over the years yeah yeah well i was always away from it all so I, all i knew was my style of fishing i weren't into the lakes i weren't into the circuits i wasn't into the circus Right. You know, the rat race, I wasn't into that, so I didn't really know a lot about it. But with the change of carp fishing now, um, I think most of the old boys know about it. A lot of, a lot of it was secrecy mm -hmm. and mystery. 
now it's just all blown up all onto the internet all you know everyone's out there doing it everyone it's there's there's no there's no mystery to it no more you know everything about my fishing was a mystery like i'd see the fish at spawn but I'd never held them. I'd never known anyone to catch them because I'm never around people that do catch them. You know, there was people like me, um, Carl from CCUK on Insta. He was going around doing his thing in the Midlands years ago, like the same sort of thing. Mm. Um, Yes, um, there's no mystery to it anymore. Everyone wants to be a someone. Everyone wants to... You know, they, but you see the ones who shine, the ones that come through. Yeah. But, you know, as young kids and that, they, they, as you say, pull your neck in a little bit. But the excitement and everything, you know, it, it gets to yeah. them and this, like, it's an enjoyment. They're really enjoying themselves because they're, they're getting their bait deals. They're getting their everything about it and stuff. And, I've never really been a part of virtually nothing like that, really, yeah. apart from my own baits, the um, mm-hmm. Matt at UB baits. Um, Ryan's got it now. Um, right. but it's still brilliant baits. I've been selling, well, he's been selling mine on there for 12, 13 years. Right. And my mates, I've got a couple of mates, they're bailiffs, they're over, Bowyers, um, the North Met, Glen right. Fable. They've, they've emptied the places on them and mm. uh, quite a few people have had them and stuff is getting onto the bait thing and stuff, you know, from these, yeah. I can sidetrack myself and that. That's but, right. No, you carry on. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, there's like, that's, and that's what I've virtually used. I've only used them squid and plums because I know they're so good. Mm. Other people have got their own preferences and baits and stuff and, you know, but, uh, yeah, there's no mystery to it no more, Dom. No, there ain't. No, with there, social media, yeah. Yeah, no, there's, no. there's nowhere to really go and fish. Around London, there is the, mm. there's the docks, the parks, no fishing lakes, cemeteries, golf courses. I've virtually been on all of them over the past 35 years. Mm. And it don't take long. It's, it's not hard fishing. Because these fish are untouched. All you've got to do, you create greed. You're going to catch everything in there. Yeah. You know, just, and that was it. You don't want to spend too long on a place. You know, you just want to get in there, catch them, move on. And just plotting about here, there and everywhere. And yeah, there's no mystery to it no more. But yeah. if they're out there enjoying themselves and keeping them off the streets and, you know, out of trouble and things, then, you know, it's all, all good to them. But that's the major change that I, I've i realised over the past years is um, – and being in the internet and the thing that I was away from, you yeah. seem to get wrapped up in the carp fishing dramas. Yeah. You know, there's a lake down in in the middle of London that Jacob's on there and Polish and, you know, they're on this place. And yeah. I was up here and I'm, I'm keeping people away from that lake and I'm 300 miles away. And then yeah. I was like, I don't even fish here. I've got to like, deal with it yourselves, you know. <laughs> the way they've, I got a call one day, Mike, there's nine of them bivvied up on it. Because when I was down there, I was doing things. I got left alone, you know. Yeah. No, well, no one knew what I was doing anyway. But the way how it's all gone, the dramas and everything through social media. I think social media has magnetised it in a way, you know, through sales and everything else, and yeah. it's ruined it as well in a way. But carp fishing is such a massive organization with all the firms that it's millions, mm-hmm. millions, millions. It's and it will always be like that because carp fishing will never yeah. never die. Yeah, and it's never gonna be how it was. I think the I think we just have to face that yeah. reality, don't we? Yeah, it's I know a, a lot of the old boys, you know, quite a few and I think a lot of them seek peacefulness than being yeah. on lakes that are overrun and you know they're mm. 
it's just madness. They don't want that. They don't want to go to a lake where um, I've never experienced it. And I've only fished on a couple of lakes, um, yeah. which are ticket waters over all these years. But to go to a place that's totally mobbed out, they can't get to where they want to go. And, it, you know, to enjoy their fishing, mm. it's just so packed. It's, you know, but that's, as you said, it's change, ain't it? It's yeah. going on, yeah. it's evolving and evolving. And I think yeah. it's all money now. It's all it's all to do with money. Everything is money. Mm -hmm. You know, their businesses, yeah. they've got to eat, they've got to live. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, that's just how it's evolved now. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, it has changed, as you know, yourself, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. <clears throat> Even with, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, and I can't, well, I've only fished, I fished Walthamstow. Um, I went on there for a, um, I got a half a ticket because mm -hmm. there was four fish that I wanted in there, uh, the fully scale, the Italian, the leather, and the common. Mm -hmm. And I had three of them out on the Saturday and the Sunday, stalked in the edge, <laughs> and I lost the fully in the culvert. Uh, and I was fishing over there with a guy called Barry Salambasis, great angler, um, very simplistic angler, running leads, you know, just normal lead, like a paternoster, mm -hmm. normal running lead. And I, I must have had a, in the time there, it was about 50 I had out, good few 30s, and Barry had quite a few as well. Um, that, that was really good fishing, like for fishing a ticket water there, Fendrayton. Yeah, I think they're the only ticket waters I've ever fished. Right. Oh, and a lake in France that I went to last May. Um, I had quite a few big ones out. It's a very um, overfished place. You know, swims are booked every... Not my, yeah. It's not my thing. It really weren't. There was bait boats going out. I was penned in a little <laughs> corner. I had yeah. three French guys over in Swim 2. They were coming right over. I had the guy next to me that had his water, and I was penned in a little corner. Yeah. But I'll, I'll send you the pictures where I had all the fish. It was like literally about 15 metres from me, right in the edge. Yeah. Nice. nice little bit of quiet. I had some nice ones as well. <laughs> uh, but apart from that, I've, no, they're the only places I've, I've yeah. really fished, you know, in a... Um, and I haven't really fished with many people either, apart from a really good mate of mine, Billy Stone. He's a good angler. Um, I fished with John Barnes. Um, I don't know if you know John, Walthamstow boy. Oh, no, uh, there's a time when we was over, at, and we was with Ed Betteridge as it goes. He'd come over, um, he just popped over, and I was sitting there chatting with him. Ed was getting set up over in the corner there. Because I'd known John for a while, and we thought it was head torches that were coming over, and I was like, "Who's that?" Next thing, it's old Bill. <laughs> Me and John have jumped down, and we're hiding right in the bushes, like right on the edge of the lake here, and we're hiding there, trying to be all quiet and everything, because the lights went, and they're sort of like looking about, they can't see anything because they're probably about eighty meters away. Ed's turned his light on as if, as if he was going to start shouting over. And he went, Mike, it was lucky I never started shouting over, weren't it? I went, I know, it was old Bill, mate. He was like, oh, bloody hell. But yeah, it was uh, John. He, he's, a, he's a good angler. He's a really good angler. I don't fish with many people. I've, mm. You know, I've been, there's other known anglers that I've fished with as well, but I'm not going to mention them. Um, that likes a bit of the poaching life. Um, Another good friend of mine and person I've angled with is Kev Wilkinson. Um, he used yeah. to be with DT Bates. He was with Dynamite for about 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, and then he had his own firm, All Seasons Bait Developments, him and his brother Mick, up in Hartford. Um, he, he's something else he is, Kev. He's just, he's a brilliant angler. Um, but apart from that, I do not fish with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you um, I said you mentioned about ke keeping stuff simple. Um, yeah. With with everything, obviously that would lead us on. I, I mentioned sort of off my briefly that 
we do a bit of a question, um, like a rotary style thing. Yeah. And it sort of ties in nicely with that. So if I ask you that now, because that'd be good. And it's like, which one rig, if you could only have one rig to go anywhere, it's like lakes, rivers, canals, anything, what one rig would you pick? Ah, oh, well, <laughs> there's two, though, that I feel really <laughs> bad about not putting the other one in. Can I say yeah. two? Yeah, go on, man. Yeah, well, the first one, um, I got shown this long before the quick change swivel was put on it, where you used to tie the um, hook with the swivel with braid. And that's John Barnes spinner rig. That's long before um, it was called, I don't even mention that name. It begins with R, uh, the John Barnes spinner rig. That's what I call it. And there's another one. Andy Moriarty, uh, the big dog rig. Uh, he showed me this many years ago. Uh, a lot of people know it as the sit-up and beg rig. But they're the two rigs for me. Brilliant. They're the two rigs for me. I'd take anywhere and I know I would catch. And the spinner yeah. rig, most people use it with a pop-up. But I don't. I fish it a wafter. Uh, okay. Yeah. But I pull the bead right round by the point of the hook because a wafter you pick it up from where the point of the hook is where that bead is ping as as john says yeah but them two (laughs) rigs they're the ones for me oh brilliant yeah cool thank you mate um and have you got a question that we can ask our next guest yeah it's a bit of a it's a bit of a gut wrencher this one okay what's your what's your worst loss Is that in terms of a fish? Or yeah, anything? yeah. What's your worst loss? Awesome. <laughs> right. Okay. I don't, what I think what we might do, Mike, as well, um, we'll probably have you on again. I reckon we can probably get um, like a bit of a mini series going with some of your sort of. We can maybe do like a little mini episode on each of the waters that you fish at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I've, if yeah, if you want to do that, I've got that. This is not even the tip of the iceberg. I've got some yeah. classic stories if you want to do them. And yeah. I, I'll, I'll mention, I've asked people if I can mention them and they've all said yes. Yeah, so okay. This is just, if you want to do it, then yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Well up for that. Yeah, let's do it, Mike. Brilliant. Okay, mate. And one other thing before you disappear, yeah. I'm getting everyone in this lockdown period to do a 60-second sketch of a carp. Just video it with your phone and take a picture and send it to me, and I'm going to do like a little mini competition just for a bit of fun. <laughs> right, and believe me, don't worry. Like I've said before on previous episodes, the bar isn't very high at all. When you see some of them, you'll you'll wet yourself. Okay, then so, I'll uh, yeah, I'll give it my yeah. best. Yeah, do <laughs> a sixty second sketch and just get the missus to record or something. Yeah. And then like I say, we'll do like a little competition. Yeah, a fun. Okay, then, fella. Awesome. Thanks, thanks right, very brilliant. much, Dom. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye.